Let's start with the first activity of test process, that is, test planning. We know by now these are the seven test processes. It starts from test planning, then comes test monitoring and control, test analysis, test design, test implementation, test execution, and ends with test completion. So let's understand what is test planning and what are the different tasks done under it. Test planning involves activities that define the objectives of testing. So test planning is the stage where we decide what we need to test and what we want to achieve from it. It also includes approach for meeting test objectives within constraints imposed by the context. We know that testing is context dependent. Based on what we test, we decide in test planning stage which approach we will use. And last point is test plans may be revisited based on feedback from monitoring and control activities. The question is why we need to revisit test plan. Suppose while testing you find that you cannot achieve the defined objective. It could be due to time constraints. In that case, we need to revisit test plan to see if we can increase the testing time or we increase resource to complete testing in same time or we go for risk-based testing by keeping time and resource constant. So any time during testing, we will the defined objective or approach is not feasible that we will need to revisit test plan and update it. So these are the three main points of test planning. Defining test objective, defining test approach, updating plan base on feedback. Now below are the points which are mentioned in fifth chapter, but we are including them here for the better understanding of the topic. In test planning stage, we determine the scope objectives and risks of testing. Since test planning is the first activity of test process, we define the roadmap of testing here. We decide what will be the scope of our testing, whether we want to perform integration testing or software testing or system testing or all of this. Next is objective. We can determine that we want to do 50% of the testing or we only to perform testing on priority one features. Like this, there can be another objective which we would like to achieve. Next is risk. Once we get the project, we analyze the risk associated with the feature and based on that, we decide whether to go for testing based on the features implemented or based on analyzed risk. First point is determining the scope, objectives and risks of testing. Second task in test planning is defining the overall approach of testing. We know that testing is context dependent. Based on what we test, we decide which approach we will use. For an example, we can go for risk-based testing if this release is critical to the customer. We can go for priority-based testing to make sure that we perform the testing on critical features as early as possible so that if any bug is found, it can be fixed and released. Or go for requirement-based testing to make sure if all the requirements are tested before release. Or choose related testing to make sure all the changed features are testing before release. Third point is integrating and coordinating the test activities into the software lifecycle activities. Let's see this example. Here we saw how traceability depends on the tool. And to provide the traceability between all the work products, we need to integrate test activities into software lifecycle activities. Let's move to fourth point. In test planning, we answer what to test and how to test. Let's see how. In test planning state, we make decision about what to test, the people and other resources required to perform the various test activities, and how test activities will be carried out. Fifth point is related to task scheduling. Let's see an example of scheduling. This is the roadmap prepared during test planning. Here, we define when testing will start, when test analysis and design shall be completed. Similarly, other test activities are planned. Sixth point is related to metrics. In test planning stage, we select metrics for test monitoring and control. For an example, let's have a look into traceability. Suppose in planning, we decide a matrix to activate 100% traceability. 
But if the testing team do not write test case for one of the customer requirements, then we will not get the link. Since all the data is in tool, by putting some filters, we can easily find out how many requirements are linked and how many are not. This way, we get different data through matrix. Seventh point is related to budget. In the planning stage, we finalize budgeting for the test activities. Eighth point is about documentation. In planning stage, we determine the level of detail and structure for test documentation. Here, we decide which document we need at the end of the testing activating, and during testing, we collect data for the documents. Last point is a very important point. Test planning is a continuous activity and is performed throughout the product's life cycle. Which means test planning is not a one-time activity. It is done throughout the development cycle. Please go through all the points once again to remember each point. See you in next lecture.